everybody. My name is Mara Walsh and I am your host today and for every virtual tour. I apologize for the postponement of yesterday's event, but I believe today is a much better day to share travel with everyone. You know, I love to travel, but I always love to come home to my country even more. I've even kissed the ground when I've returned to the US after studying abroad when I was in college. When I traveled all over Europe for seven months in the late 80s, I remember the pride I had when I showed the eagle on my passport every time I moved from country to country. You could just tell that our nation was respected by every foreign official who stamped the passport. The American image was strong and respected. Travel enhances our understanding of the world, other cultures and ways of life and helps us become better global citizens. And it is our job as individuals to try to keep those lessons learned out of our suitcases and practice these character traits in everyday life. Before we get started on our virtual tour today, I have a few housekeeping items. Firstly, audio. If you need to turn up your audio, you can do this in one of three ways. Attach a headset or earbuds. This is by far the best way to hear on any device. Turn up your computer audio or go to the little arrow next to the mute um, microphone icon on your Zoom menu and go to the audio settings and you can turn up the output or the speaker. Screen. In order to enlarge the presentation screen the, to the biggest viewing possible, if you're on a computer, simply move the vertical tool, the little vertical bar between my video image and the slide move it closest to me so that it enlarges the slide and keeps my video smaller. If you're on an iPhone or an iPad or a device, you might have to swipe left or right with your finger to get to the presentation. And I'm sorry to say that we will not be enabling closed captions during today's event. There are several issues with it, um, especially how it displays on iPads and iPhones and the, interrupt, the interpretation of the words from the guides especially guides with access, have not resulted in accurate transcriptions. So I'm sorry, but we, we will not have that feature today. Okay, now we should all be optimized for the best viewing results. I'll share a little bit about myself for those of you who don't know me. Again, my name is Mara Walsh. I'm in the US and specifically between Philadelphia and New York. I started leading tours with EF Girl Scouts as a Girl Scout leader, taking girls and their families on international destinations each summer. I have since expanded my travel program and added adult only tours as well as family friendly tours. In nearly all of my tours, I've been partnering with EF Tours or their adult division Go Ahead Tours. I hope to be able to offer these and many more physical tours in the months to come. There's a couple of reasons I started this virtual tour series. One, I really wanted to support the tour director community during this time of travel restrictions where they've not been able to travel or work. I really wanted to keep the excitement of travel alive for my travel group and extend that opportunity to those who have learned about these tours through friends, family, social media, and other means. And I'm so glad that so many of you have become part of our group. We've done several tours in the past months since COVID struck. If you missed any of them, you can go to Girl Travel Tours um, and see the list of the virtual tours to access the recordings and you can register for future tours. We have several coming up in 2021 and the list should be on your screen, but I'll read it off. Amsterdam, Florence and Tuscany, a World War II and the Western Front tour, Scandinavia, notable women of Santa Fe, mystery on the Orient Express, Northern Ireland and its troubles, Iceland, Lucerne and the Alps, Budapest, the Royals, Ontario and Quebec, and we have many more to follow after that. As long as you're interested in viewing these virtual tours, we will continue to produce them for you. I know many of you found me and my virtual tours through Facebook, and some of you are on Facebook now viewing this streamed event. Welcome. I just want to again send out a warning regarding the scammers on Facebook. 
these there are several scammers out there who copy legitimate events and pages that means the page actually looks like my page the events actually look like my event they have my name in some cases my contact information those are not real in most cases and the only way to safely access my tours is through my website which you see on the slide that's up right now if by any means you are directed to a page that asks for credit card to enter an event do not give a credit card these events that i host are free and you can access them without a credit card my virtual tour presentations do not require credit cards. So please know that this is something that is being done and it's it's really unlawful. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to share a few ways with you to interact with us during the event. Feel free to ask questions about the tour, the tour director or my travel program in the Q&A link. That's on the bottom of the Zoom toolbar. Um, you can also use the chat feature. If you use the chat feature and that communication is really just coming to me and we won't address those questions after the tour. But if you want a question addressed after the tour, you can put it in the Q&A and we'll get to it. Um, on Facebook, if you put them in the Facebook feed, I can try to do my best by monitoring both the Facebook and the Zoom. I always like to introduce an interactive poll so we can familiarize ourselves with um, who's out there and how well you know the region. So I'm just going to launch the poll for everybody kind of to give us their uh, their idea of what their connection is to Barcelona. I've been in love it. I have a trip booked. I plan to go in the future. I have no immediate interest, but that could change probably after tonight. And I'm solely interested in experiencing it virtually. OK, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time so that I can see your responses, but it looks like there's a lot of people, more than half the people who have been and loved it. So I'm going to end this poll. I'm going to share it with the audience so that you can see it. But essentially, you'll see that about 55% have been to Barcelona. Um, there's about 30% that plan to go in the future. And there's plenty that are uh, looking at it for possible trips and um, enjoying it virtually tonight. So. It's always nice to see what the connection is. Um, I, I do believe that no matter what your familiarity is with the region, you will learn more today um, from our tour director. And a tour would not be complete without a fantastic tour director. A tour director is like a personal travel concierge. He or she stays with the group from start to finish and shares a world of knowledge, manages all your travel plans and makes sure your experience is stressless and full of positive experiences, allowing you to make lifelong memories. These are by far the most important people in the group, as far as I'm concerned. And if you're not traveling, if we are not traveling, these tour directors, they have no work, and many of them haven't worked in a year. So I'll share with you via chat and during the Q&A how we can tip the tour director after if you are so inclined. All of the tips go directly to the tour director, except for the Zoom expenses that are taken out. You know, I'm hoping that this virtual tour will not only keep an en us engaged with travel and what the world has to offer us, but also it allows our tour director to do what he does best and share his knowledge and passion for his country. Today, we're lucky to have a tour director who loves art, architecture, and his country of Spain. We will be visiting Barcelona, the jewel of the Mediterranean, and we'll discover the brilliant architecture of Antoni Gaudi. I am honored to introduce you to our amazing tour director back for a second time this year, Manuel. Manuel, uh, you can take over the controls at this point and share your screen if you're ready. Um, yes, here, I'm ready. Okay, great. So why don't you, um, if you can, you can uh, start sharing your screen. Okay, yes, one sec. Sure. That might make it easier. I stopped sharing mine. Okay, good. One moment. Okay. Good job. I've seen we are here, right? <laughs> you are there and I'm going to mute myself and you can take over. 
Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mara. Thank you for giving me, giving me this opportunity for a second time. It's my pleasure to be here with you and with all the audience for all, from all over the world, I guess. So, um, hola from Spain. It's evening here, so good evening. And also good afternoon and good morning to everyone in other parts of the world. As Mara told you, I live in Spain, in particular in Madrid. That's my city. You have a kind of vintage picture of the main square Puerta del Sol behind me. But I really love Barcelona. I used to travel to Barcelona so many times along the year. Sadly, not this year. As she told you, we are not having these tours or traveling or even having work. But you know, probably is my second best city in the, in the country. If I have money enough, I'll buy a second property there by the Mediterranean in the beautiful city of uh, Barcelona. I used to work as a true director with uh, different companies, but mainly with EF, as, as Mara, for the last 15 years uh, or so. So uh, it's going to be my pleasure to introduce you this city and also the beautiful art and architecture of Antoni Gaudí. So if you are ready, we could start with the presentation. So, bending goods to Spain and to Barcelona. Let's go there. Okay, first of all, a little overview of where we are in the Iberian Peninsula, obviously, you have in here, and in the northeast of the Iberian Peninsula, we have the area of Catalonia, eh, which is capital Barcelona. In this funny map, we have the most important monuments and food and, you know, um, typical things in Spain, like the flamenco in the south, or the paella by Valencia and Mediterranean, even, you know, the north with the um, um, Church of Santiago de Compostela and the Guggenheim in Bilbao. But let's focus in Catalonia. Catalonia, uh, it's one of the several regions of Spain or autonomous community as, as we are you know, organized politically. And in somehow uh, they could be a part of <clears throat> a, a, a different country. There's some controversy in the last years about that. You could ask me, you could ask me later about that. But so far, Catalonia is still part of Spain. Eh? So let's go to uh, Barcelona, the capital of Catalonia. Then be goods to Barcelona. In Catalonia, they speak Catalan, which is slightly different from, from, from Spanish or from Portuguese and Italian. Uh, they have their own language, their own culture, so they are very proud of that. That's probably one of the reasons because they feel different and they want to be a part of, of Spain. So if you have been in Barcelona, probably you are familiar with this uh, map. Uh, if not, it's going to be an introduction for you. Barcelona is by the Mediterranean, is one of the, the main cities by the Mediterranean, with a population of about 1.6 million inhabitants, but almost 5 million in the metropolitan area, so it makes you know, fifth um, in more important or biggest metropolitan region in the whole European Union. So it's, the space they have is limited by the sea uh, to the east, the mountains of Colserola to the north, and then they have two rivers, uh, one to, sorry, the mountains to the west, and two rivers, one to the north to France, and one to the south uh, to, to Valencia. So the most important spots in the city, okay, we have here Las Ramblas, is this beautiful boulevard, always, you know, busy with people that connects, you know, two parts of the city, the very important uh, Catalonia Square, which is the connection between the old city, the former Roman medieval city with the ex, um, enlargement of the city that happened in the second half of the 20th century and uh, connect that part with the port, the former port. Now is the old port, like an amusement area with the statue of uh, Columbus, which is just dead. Uh, there at the end of Las Ramblas. In this area, in the center, in the old city, we have the, the very Gothic, the Gothic um, um, neighborhood with the beautiful uh, Gothic cathedral and medieval palaces and residences. It's a beautiful uh, area to go in a stroll through the narrow streets full of, you know, opportunities to, to, to shop, to have a coffee, restaurants, a beautiful, trendy area. Another area that probably you have visited if you, you've been in Barcelona is the Montjuic Hill. 
the Montjuic Hill in the south of the city uh, is an important amusement park. And also it was very important for the city in two key moments in, his history, in, in the history of Barcelona. In the year 1929, they held their a kind of international exhibition. So they built beautiful buildings at the, as the National Palace. And later on, most importantly, in the 1992, they held there the Olympics, the Barcelona Olympics. Uh, that moment changed the city. They built different kind of resources for the city, new roads, new airport, new train station, and also they opened the city to the sea, yeah, they, they, to, the, to the beach. That is the area that you have, uh, oh, sorry, something happened here. Okay, one moment. The only reason I get back. One sec. Okay, we are going back to the Barry Gothic, to Montjuic, and then to the Olympic Port. Sorry, sorry for that. So that is the area that was developed during the Olympics. They built two uh, high towers and also they opened the city to the beach. Yeah? It's also nice, a nice amusement area with a beautiful marina. And also, if you like a sport, in particular football, what we call football in, in Europe, you should visit the Can Nou, eh, the stadium of the Barcelona Football Club, one of the most important uh, in the world. And now I'm going to show you where are located the, the four most important buildings of Antoni Gaudí in the city, some of the buildings he built in Barcelona. Two of them are along the Passeis de Gracia, which is this kind of beautiful, elegant avenue, a kind of Champs-Élysées. It is north of Plaza de Catalunya in the modern part of the, the, the enlargement and, and neighborhood. And then we have the Casa Bajo that we'll see later in there. And also we have La Pedrera or Casa Mila, both in, the, um, in, in this avenue. And a little bit more to the north, to the mountains, we have the, uh, oh, sorry for that. Something happened with this. Okay, we have the Park Well, which is in, in the mountains to the north of the, um, of the city. And also in the center, we have the Sagrada Familia. Let me go there in a moment, through the port again, through the stadium. We'll get back to the city center, Passe de Gracia, Casa Baggio, La Pedrera, Casa Milà, and then the Park Well, a beautiful park for the city design also by Gaudí. And in that area also we have the Sagrada Familia. Okay, so now we are going to have uh, a little overview of the city with this uh, kind of video promoted by the uh, Spanish tourist office. Uh, we are in the Mediterranean, so we have the beautiful light and the beach of this um, sea. You are right to Barcelona, obviously through the, one of the most important airports in the city. Uh, you could go directly to see some of the highlights like the park well. This is part of this beautiful park. It's a city dedicated to the Art Nouveau or the modernism, those are Las Ramblas, this beautiful, lively boulevard in the center of the city, some of the modern beaches that were opened because of the Olympics, modern buildings like this Torre Akbar, but also you could go to the city center to enjoy the, the, the cathedral, the medieval, the Renaissance buildings that we have in this Gothic quarter that I told you, uh, with these beautiful squares, outdoor cafes, artists on the streets, hiding corners. It's a city beautiful to, to, to walk uh, and stroll around. That's the Cathedral of the Mar, the beautiful Santa Maria del Mar Church. This is a very trendy area to shop. And this is one of the most beautiful markets that we have in Spain, La Boqueria Market, just in the middle of La Ramblas. And you could get lost uh, through those stars. Uh, beautiful architecture as you see with this other uh, roof of the market, the music palace in this kind of modernist style, again the park well, uh, and beautiful and important museums like the one dedicated to Pablo Picasso who lived in Barcelona for a while 
Another important artist is Joan Miro. This Mies van der Rohe Pavilion was part of the 1929 exhibition. And also they have this beautiful museum dedicated to the art of Catalonia and the one uh, of the contemporary art. It's a trendy city with a lot of shopping opportunities with some important um, international uh, marks like Custo Barcelona or Vinson, those are um, Spanish companies. And these buildings, an overview of these buildings of Gaudí, La Pedrera, Casa Pajó, and of course, La Sagrada Familia uh, that we are going to, we are going to see uh, later. Also, it's a, uh, you know, um, paradise for gastronomy. El Bulli, one of the most important restaurants we have in Spain and in the world, uh, led by Ferran Adria. Sadly, is closed. He has a foundation now. And also another restaurant that we have in the markets, in some of the hotels, like, you know, this important chef, Sergi Arola, all of them with Michelin stars, as well as the restaurant Control. So you like, you like, you know, go for chefs, and uh, Trendy Cuisine, Barcelona is also your place. Mm, beautiful uh, uh, nightlife and um, a city you could dream of with the monument we are going to see a little bit later. But here you have an overview of some of them at night, like La Pedrera again and Casa Pajo. A beautiful architecture from Gaudí we are going to enjoy in Italy. The modern city with the Torre Bar, the cathedral, of, at, at the back, and this is the area of Montjuic that was developed in the 1929, the Olympic uh, port at the end of Las Ramblas in a whole overview of, uh, of the city illuminated at night. So if you, if you haven't been, it's the time for you to come and visit the beautiful city of uh, Barcelona. Okay. But now we are going to uh, uh, get to know this architect. Antoni Gaudí y Cornet. He was born in the 1852 in Reus, which is a, a small town near to Barcelona, and uh, he died in Barcelona in 1926. First of all, uh, I want to say with you some of his biography. Uh, he's considered a unique architect uh, of a very personal uh, style, sui generis on his own and is the greatest exponent of the Catalan modernism. What is the modernism? Well, the modernism uh, is um, a, a part of an international movement for architecture, arts, and um, that happened along the world in Europe mainly in between the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s. It, it had different names in different uh, countries on different languages. In, in Catalan, it, it is moder uh, modernism. In Spanish, it's modernismo, but it's also known as Art Nouveau in French, Julian Steel in German, the Steel Liberty in Italian, or Modern Style or British Art Nouveau in English. Okay? It was a kind of reaction against you know, the academic and very perfect tradition, traditional style of the 19th century. Okay? It was mostly inspired by natural forms. Uh, so, but you know, it, it, it evolved in different ways in different countries. So let's focus in this guy, Antoni Gaudi. He was born in Reus, as I told you, and um, in a family of artisans. That was very good for him because it gave him, you know, experience in crafts and um, above all, a kind of 3D skills. Uh, that he later on um, will apply on his um, works. Um, he had a very poor health during his childhood uh, uh, when, when he was young. Uh, so he had to rest long periods of, of, of this time. Uh, it was sad for, uh, for, for in, in one side, but in the other side, gave he, um, and, uh, um, allowed he to, to observe the natural and to study uh, uh, everything that was around him from his house in the countryside uh, that we have a picture here in Rilodon. So he applied later on all of that. Uh, at the age of 18, he gets into the Barcelona Higher School of Architecture. He wasn't really a, a good student, uh, not very regular. And when he got uh, his uh, title, his uh, degree, the director of the school, Mr. Elias Rogen, he says something like, you know, 
we don't know if we have forgiven the title either a fool or a genius. But at the end, it was a genius, but at the moment, they didn't know. Okay, this picture here is a, a project for a monumental fountain in Plata Catalunya that never happened, but was a, a kind of final project of his, of his career. In 1878, he graduates and uh, happened something very important for his career. He met this industrial, um, industrialist patron, Eusebi Well. Uh, he was a kind of a sponsor, a mecenas for him during his life, but also they were, uh, they were very good friends along uh, their lives, okay? And some other facts out of curiosity. For instance, he became vegetarian very, very young, probably because his poor health. He used to walk around six miles every day. Normally he was walking from, from his home uh, in the north of the city to the Sagrada Familia and, and back. He normally, um, he didn't, you know, uh, uh, make plans or, or blueprints. He preferred to, to make 3D plaster models. And he wanted to be there working with the, with the with the people on, 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 the, on, on the spot. Okay? He normally designed also all the furniture and um, um, on, on his, his properties or his buildings, like these beautiful and uh, uh, strange chairs. This is uh, known, he was uh, uh, hit by a tram in, in an avenue in Barcelona in 1926. And what happened, uh, he, he dressed so poorly that people, they thought he was a, you know, a poor guy because, you know, he was famous at that moment, but they didn't have internet or media, so they didn't know him uh, by the face. So he was, he was taken to a hospital for poor people. Okay? Instead, you know, one of the best hospitals in, in town. When um, he woke up, uh, they tried to move him to the better hospital, but he refused. Eh? He, he said, you know, that is the God's plan, and he died, okay? And another important fact is seven of his works are listed as UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, well, it's a lot for just one person, right? Uh, we are going to see some of them later, but you know, those are in the 1984, they put in the list the Palwell, the Palau Well, La Casa Milá, and the Sagrada Familia from the 2005, the Casa Vicens, the Casa Bayo, and the Church of the Colonial World. I need to add to this that Spain is the country, the second country in the world having more of those, these uh, world heritage sites. The first one is Italy with 54 or so. In Spain, we have 47 of those sites. So a lot. Uh, so we, you are welcome to visit all of them if you want you come to visit us. Okay, before getting into, into a review of some of the styles and, and buildings, I want to give you some of uh, the design keys to better understand uh, Gaudí's architecture. Okay, Gaudí's passion in life uh, led uh, were the inspiration for his works, and those passions were architecture, nature, and religion, and also Catalonia, eh? because he was very Catalan, he felt a very, he felt a big love for his country. Um, but also we have some other keys, uh, very particular for the architecture of Gaudi. For instance, the use of the catenary, catenary art. The catenary art, as you know, this kind of arch that we made with a chain or with a thread, uh, and uh, we will distribute the, 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 the weights, you know, depending how much we get closer the two, you know, uh, points of the chain. Huh? You have a, a little model he made for uh, one of the, the buildings he, he built. So he put these little, you know, weight sacks to get the, the arch that he wanted and, uh, and to get the, the mathematical you know, calculations, okay. Uh, he used this a lot in a lot of buildings. For instance, this is the, the catenary art, but with an inclination uh, for one of these beautiful tunnels that we have in the park. Well, 
maybe you are more familiar with this arch in some of you that uh, it is in Missouri, if I'm correct. Okay, so this is one of the um, techniques that he used. Also, he wanted to adapt the natural forms uh, to their to the buildings, and and he did that using these geometrical forms based on rules or faces. This is very technical, I know, but it's important because we are going to see and understand later that. Some of the geometrical forms he, he used for that was this kind of hyperbolic paraboloid. Don't ask me any technical about that, please. Also, this other form, the helicoid, and among others, also he used this hyperboloid. Just to let you know, he used all these kind of mathematical geometrical forms to adapt the natural forms to the stone or to the materials he was working uh, on the buildings. Other very important characteristic about this um, work are the trencadis. Trencadis means broken in Catalan. And this is kind of broken tile mosaics that you could uh, make with broken china, with glass, with other kind of little pieces uh, to make like an hybrid uh, uh, with geometric patterns, okay? We are going to see a lot of those examples, but here you have some of them. Okay? For instance, you know, this is the, the dragon or lizard uh, that we have in Nepal well, and this is how he used these trincadis in some of the window, windows of one of the church. And finally, this is um, something that is very particular for me, this kind of hybrid forms in metamorphosis, you know, this fluidity. We have a kind of idea uh, of uh, for, uh, uh, coming from the form, getting to another point. So the, the, the forms are there in between, okay? So make us, you know, soft, inestable and fluid. So somehow provokes a kind of curiosity. We want to know what's gonna be. Is it's like a solder or is a face mask? You know, this is some of the characteristics at the end of, of his works is in particular. We could see it in another way also in the sculptures in one of the facades of the Sagrada Familia. Okay, so now after these keys to better understand the, the works of Gaudí, we are going to review a little bit of the main work, his main works and kind of a style periods. And I base this on a study of Joan Bergos. Joan Bergos was um, a disciple and a biographer of Gaudí and he established uh, five periods on, uh, uh, on Gaudí's uh, works. So we are going to analyze a little bit, you know, uh, the most important ones, okay? We have first the early works, okay? And one of the first works after graduation was this uh, lamps, lamp post in the Plaza Real in Barcelona. Okay? You could see a little bit in detail. He put uh, a little care on the little details on, 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 on the lamppost with a little eagle over there and thing. It was kind of a, a new thing at that moment. Uh, the Plaza Real of the Royal Square in Barcelona is just in the middle of the Ramblas, okay? Very close to the port. You have an overview, this kind of a typical Spanish square with the arches all around with outdoor cafes and restaurants and shops. It's a beautiful, um, area to, to visit when you are in the city center in the Barri Gothic in Barcelona. Another of his early works in this period, just after the graduation, was this kind of um, a factory. It's in Mataro, it's a town near Barcelona. It's the Mataro Workers Cooperative. So in here, you could see he used this catenary arc uh, maybe for the first time and also the exposed brick. Okay? Those are two of the first works he, he made. After these first periods, uh, he started with kind of, it's called Orientalist periods, because he was influenced a lot for the Asian culture, like uh, China, China, Japan, Persia, the Far East, India, okay? But also by the movies style in Spain, eh? the, the buildings that we have, especially in the South. So he used a lot of ceramic, tile decoration, movies, arches, columns, and pinnacles, for instance. And one of the best examples is not in Barcelona. Gaudí built 
three or four important buildings outside Catalonia and Barcelona. One of them was in Comillas, in the north of Spain, in the region of Cantabria. I, I mark it for you on the map. So this is a kind of manor house mansion for a, 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 a very rich family called El Capricho in the city of Comillas at the end of the 1800s. See, using this tile, it looks like kind of, oh no, um, minaret, minaret of a, of a mosque, uh, very elaborated. And he used this tile, but not yet the trencari. So he's using the, you know, manufactured tiles, uh, uh, but also reflecting this, this, um, this uh, natural, or influence of nature as the modernist movement. And also included in this uh, Orientalist period, we have this beautiful house, Casa Vicens, which is located in the upper part of Barcelona, by the Avinguda Diagonal. Okay. Okay, this I mentioned a house he built for a, a very important um, a businessman dedicated to, to sell tiles. So that's why, you know, it's covered with all kinds of tiles, you know, but it's still not broken, okay? Uh, it has a very Spanish new movies influence. Uh, also with some oriental and neoclassical, you know, details as, as in the balcony. And he, he was on the way to create a new language, language on his architecture. Uh, and it's very important, this Casa Vicens, because it was his first very important project. So from this moment on, he became kind, kind of popular in town. Okay? Inside the, the, the house, we have this picture with also this all kind of very oriental ambience. Okay? And uh, also in this period, we have the well pavilions. Remember this guy who said it well, he was his friend, one of the most important uh, industrial tycoon in, in Barcelona. He commissioned a lot of works to Gaudí. One of them uh, were these uh, kind of pavilions out, almost outside Barcelona in the very, what well, is the south of the city, but uh, to the mountains. Uh, this was a kind of um, amusement house for the family with, um, with horses and uh, forests. And um, it has a, this oriental, orientalist design. You could see very well in this fence, the, the, open, ga the, the open gate with this impressive dragon eh, made with, you know, uh, um, forged uh, iron. Okay? And also this kind of pagod uh, dome that he put at the, at the top of, uh, of the building. And finally, we are going to talk about another building commissioned by Mr. Well, the Palau Well. Okay, it's one also of the uh, buildings listed by UNESCO. The Palau Well is just in the center of the city by Las Ramblas. It was a house commissioned by Mr. Well to Gaudi to impress the society. He held, they held here, you know, um, you know, social meetings, receptions, uh, balls. So that was the purpose. Eh? And it was built also with this influence. In particular here, he was working with the, with, with the iron, with the iron uh, and the iron gates with this uh, beautiful detail we could see here in between the two, the two, the two doors. Uh, inside was very ornate. Uh, uh, now it's a museum, you can visit, but pretty much was a place to show off for the high society led by this wealth family. And then we are moving uh, to another period after the Orientalist period, which is called Neo-Gothic period. Okay? Obviously, you could tell it was inspired by the medieval Gothic art that we have a lot in Spain. And um, I'm going to start with two buildings, two of the buildings that were built outside Catalonia and Barcelona. Two of them were built in León, in the northwest um, part of Spain. And uh, the first one was this Casa Botines. Again, was a um, commission for a very wealthy family in the city of León. He was inspired by the Gothic cathedrals that we have in Spain, like the, the one in León, a beautiful one, the one in Burgos, by the castles 
that we have in this area in Castilla and Leon. And he wanted uh, to give to the building this feeling to harmonize, to be, to be, to be in, in harmony with the city of Leon. So this kind of neo-Gothic style was one of the most successful um, styles at the time. Was inspired also and uh, influenced by the European architects like Violet Le Duc. I don't know if you are familiar uh, with this guy, but he was the one responsible of the reconstruction of the Notre Dame de Paris at that time, was rebuilt, and Violet Le Duc was the responsible of that uh, recreation. Yeah? So this is one of the buildings. And also in this same area, very close to Leon, in a city called Astorga, he built this beautiful Episcopal palace, also inspired in the Gothic art, in the cathedrals, in the castles. Okay? He, he, he took this to build, he, he, he was given this commission because he was friend of the two families, the one responsible of the, of the palace in, in Astorga and the one in Leon, in Casa Matiz. By the way, it's a beautiful area to visit in Spain, not that well known by the foreigners. If you have the chance, come to visit Leon. And then in this same period, we have some of the buildings, we have not seen all of them, but some of the most important ones. This is not that important, but it was a, it was a college, a school, the Theresian School, also in the upper part of Barcelona. Also reflecting a kind of evolved uh, Gothic style, using a lot this uh, exposed brick, which is also a kind of Moorish influence. So he was missing a little bit uh, the both styles. And then um, with some details, as you can see, using this kind, again, of catenary arc for one of the entrances. And finally, another mention, a manor house for um, uh, Figueres family, the Torre del Seguar, or Casa Figueres, they were the, they were the owners of this uh, kind of mansion. The um, curiosity here is the building was built in the same spot where there was a castle of one of the kings of Aragon. Aragon was the kingdom of this area of Spain in, during the medieval ages. And there was a castle there built in the 15th century. So with the time, the property, with the ruins, uh, passed from one owner to another. And at the end, in the beginning of the 1900s, you know, the Figueres family uh, bought the, the spot and commissioned, uh, commissioned the building to Gaudi, and he built this beautiful uh, mansion. And then we are going to move to uh, another third period, the naturalist period. This is a time when Gaudi uh, perfected his personal style mainly inspired by uh, the search of nature. He wanted new uh, solution, new structural solutions, and using this, remember, geometry forms uh, based on rules, surfaces, and um, that gave him a great creative freedom, uh, a lot of imagination in the ornamental style, and he was very free to do whatever he, he wanted to do and gave to the village you know, a great uh, a structural richness. Okay, the first building um, to mention is this Casa Calvet uh, that is the, in the very center of Barcelona by Las Ramblas. Probably is one of the most conventional of his works and in, 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 in one side because it was one it was located in one of the most elegant areas in Barcelona so he wanted to be you know paired with the buildings around but um, also it has a lot of modernist elements as you could appreciate on this balcony using the curves and uh, projecting you know, these uh, new ideas for instance uh, this is you know the one of the vision to the door, the look out, oh no, was it in English, Mirilla is in Spanish, that was, you know, added to each of the doors at the entrance. So this kind of organic, kind of, we don't know what is that shape, okay? Um, in this period also, we have another UNESCO World Heritage Place that was built outside Barcelona for the Colonia Well. Again, this Mr. Well. It was a beautiful church 
um, made for the workers of uh, these um, industrialists. They have a factory over there. So this is kind of totally new. You could see the shape, you know, uh, for a building at that period, really unique, using all that kind of geometry uh, techniques that we saw to get the curves of the dome, all the connections, is really amazing also inside. He developed of all his creativity, creativity at that moment. It's located in the town of Santa Coloma de Cervello, very close to Barcelona. And finally, also, Belonging to this period, we have some of the buildings we are going to see a little bit, a little bit more in depth. One is the Park World in the north of the city. Other one is the Casa Baggio and the uh, Casa Mila or La Pedrera in the Avenguda Diagonal. Okay. After this period, uh, we have another one uh, that is considered like the synthesis, the organic synthesis of the final period of Gaudí which include also some of the parts of these buildings we are going to see in a moment. And finally, the great um, creation of Gaudí, which is the Sagrada Familia. But let's go to analyze a little bit more, you know, these three important buildings first. Well, the Park Well. The Park Well was built in Barcelona in between 1900 and 1914. And now it's a public park, okay? I want to show you a little bit an overview with a, a video. Let me put it over here. But the thing is, you know, um, it was intended to be um, um, a project to build 60 houses in the outskirts of Barcelona, in, in, in the area of the going to the mountains to the, to the west. So Mr. Well wanted to sell those houses to the Borwasi, to the rich families in Barcelona. He was inspired by this English um, garden city. He traveled a lot, so he was in London. He saw this kind of English garden cities, uh, and he wanted the same for Barcelona. But it was a failure project. Only two houses out of 60 were built. One at the end was bought by Gaudí, and he was living there till, till his death with his father and niece. And the other one was bought by a, by a, by a family, it still is a private property. But the rest never was built, was a failure because the people, they, they, they didn't want to you know, go so far away from the city center. They, wanna be, they were rich, they wanna, they wanna be seen and see the other people around the Avenida uh, Diagonal or the Paseo de so, they, they refused to go so far away from the city center. So at the end, in the 1926, became a public park. Now it has a monumental area uh, that you, you need to, be, to pay a ticket to visit it. Here we have, you know, uh, these examples of the trencaries, the broken tiles that you could see all over the place. Also, you saw in the images, you know, the main entrance with the beautiful staircase, the area with the columns. That area with the columns, it was intended to be a market. This area here, and with these beautiful, you know, seals uh, at the top of the of the of the roof, uh, of the ceiling. Sorry. Uh, we have another view of the main entrance here, through the benches. Uh, that tower belongs to the houses uh, for the for the guards uh, of the entrance. Uh, they say those two are like you know the Hansel and Gretel houses. One is a shop and the other one is a museum. And this is the main esplanade from where you could have a beautiful view over the city of Barcelona. The important thing is, you know, the water, when it rains, the water was filtered by the sand and through the columns gets into the bottom, into the, uh, into the bottom where they have a deposit of water. It was a very innovative and avant-garde idea, okay? But somehow didn't work. <laughs> so uh, thanks to that, we have this beautiful park for all visitors and, and part of the park is free access for, for everyone. Okay. okay, so let's move from, um, from uh, Park Well to Casa Baggio. Uh, Casa Baggio, Casa, bueno, uh, probably you have realized, means house or home. So Casa Baggio is the home, the house of the Baggio family. Okay, we have uh, these three pictures, beautiful pictures to, 
to have an overview. It was built in between 1907 and 19, uh, oh, sorry, uh, 1904 and 1906. That's, that's uh, not correct. Um, and the thing is, was located in the main avenue of Barcelona, this is the Passage of Gracia, that kind of shamery set with all the boutiques, the fancy coffee stores, the theaters were located. And it was located in a, a block that was later known as the block of this court, or the apple of this court. Why apple? Because in Spanish, we say manzana for block. So manzana in English, the Spanish is apple. So the block of this court or the apple of this court. Because pretty much in the same, at the same time, uh, four of the most important architects, sorry, five of the most important architects at the time were commissioned to build different houses for different families. It was kind of competition to show off both for the families and for the architects. So we have the houses here, okay? The first one here is the Casa Leo Morera, built in 1905 by the important architect Luis Domenic in Montaner. Then Casa Mulleras in 1906 by Enrique Sagnier. Later on, Casa Monet, Bonnet, sorry, 1915 by Marcelino Coquilliat. And then Casa Amager, built in 1900 by Giuseppe Pucci Calafan. I'm gonna stop here, okay? Because the other ones, they have, you know, uh, beautiful, trendy, expensive stores, but in here, you have a museum dedicated to the chocolate. Because at Magier is um, uh, an industrial, is a factory of chocolate, very, very popular and, uh, in Catalonia and in Spain. So you come to visit again Barcelona, or you can for the first time, don't miss this house and the delicious chocolate they, they, they sell. You could buy the chocolate in, in other places, but that is the museum. And finally, the Casa Baggio, built in 1906 by Antonio Gaudi. Okay. So we are going to uh, visit a little bit of Casa Baggio. Um, we have, this is the main floor. So in, in these houses, the, the owner of the, of the building, the, the family, uh, they live in the, in the main floor, which is, you know, the first floor, probably, uh, for you. And then the other floors were rented uh, to other families. So it's the main floor to see uh, the avenue from the window, and also to allow people walking through the, through the, uh, through the avenue to see them, you know, how much rich they were. So we have the view from the outside and also the view from the inside. With this kind of columns on shapes, organical, it looks like bones. In fact, the second name of the house is Casa de los Osos, in Catalan, House of Bones. Do this visceral, skeletical, organic quality, right? Okay. A few straight lines, okay, in, in, in the facade or even inside. You have here like an overview of the, the main salon and with open spaces because Gabi was able to do this for the first time and um, giving freedom to the family to uh, decorate and to organize the spaces without a structural walls. That, is, that was a very important innovation at that time. Um, also in the facade, you have this beautiful trencaris mosaic, uh, colorful mosaic, okay? This is a view of the interior, uh, interior patio that connects, you know, the different apartments. And it looks like a little, um, you know, sea with the bubbles going up to the light. Uh, it looks like that when you are there inside. And in the, in the upper part, we have, you know, these um, attics uh, that looks like um, an skeleton of a dragon because they have a dragon in the rooftop. We are going to, I'm going to introduce you the dragon of the Casa Patio. Here is a dragon, okay? With the back, okay? With the scales. But also you, you could see there a cross, right? A chimney. Okay, this is a link to a legend that is very popular in Catalonia. The legend of San George. 
Saint George, Saint Jordi in Catalan, is the same patron of Catalonia. Um, but the legend of Saint George uh, is different in, in different parts of the world because it's not only in Catalonia. But basically, you know, it's a population. In this case, the, the, the town of Mont Blanc was threatened by a dragon. Okay, uh, to to. So they have a kind of um, agreement with the dragon. They need to feed the dragon every day with one person, okay? Um, so there's a moment when the person to be given to the dragon was the princess, okay? So suddenly, St. George in a shiny armor appears there and kills the dragon. So the chimney you have here, it looks like a sword, but this was the sword that St. George used to kill the dragon and to rescue the princess. Okay. So from the blood of the dragon arose a beautiful roses. So St. George gave the roses to the princess. So that is the origin of a tradition that happens in Barcelona and Catalonia, the, 23, the 23rd of April every year, the day of St. Jordi, the day of St. George. So the gentleman, the boyfriends, the men in general, uh, buy roses for the girls and the girls uh, <clears throat> buy books for the gentleman. This is changing nowadays because most of the girls, they want to read too, right? But you know, that's the tradition. So Barcelona is full of roses and books that day. It's the day of the book, not only in Barcelona, in Spain, because that day is the day when two of the most important writers in the world, Shakespeare, Shakespeare and Cervantes die the same year, 1616. So we celebrate internationally the day of the books. So this is a beautiful facade at the, in the upper part with this kind of a skeleton mask that it seems that, you know, they are together with the other ones that we saw, the people that the dragon, you know, <clears throat> have eaten, okay? That what happens in this day uh, of San Jordi is everyone uh, by roses. So in this house in, in Casa Bajo, they change the exterior, adding roses to the balconies and to other part of the fascia every year. And they have a kind of ceremony with lights and music. It's really, really beautiful. Okay, so let's move from Casa Bajo to other of the very important buildings uh, of Gaudí, Casa Mila, that was built in between 1906 and 1912. So it's also known as La Pedrera. Why La Pedrera? Pedrera comes from stone because it looks outside like a stone quarry yeah? to this exterior stone look. It was commissioned by this other very wealthy family, the Mila family, uh, to be divided in 16 apartments. Eh? Now only one person are living in one of the apartments. The rest of the building belongs to a foundation that um, you know manages the museum and the visits. So most of the building is a museum with different parts you could visit, but there's still a family living over there. Okay. Uh, it was located in this Passe de Gracia, as I told you, the most important avenue at that time for the Bourgeoisie, for these fancy coffee shops, the theaters, and those apartment buildings uh, to be built. Okay? And he, Gaudi designed it in a very innovative way with these kind of wavy stones in the facade, and you could see in this model, and these strange uh, iron uh, works. He used new materials eh? uh, like um, iron and also uh, bricks and uh, stone uh, to uh, allow open spaces. So most of the apartments, they haven't uh, uh, structural walls. And he also, uh, as an innovation, he decided to build two big patios to connect the buildings, to get them light and air. Also, he wanted to have a kind of expressive architecture as other architects at the time, like Le Corbusier. He also designed all the interior, the decoration of the apartments. Another uh, very uh, new idea is that he built for the very first time a garage in the, in the basement, okay? It has like three facades because in this area of Barcelona, you, uh, you could see the corners in the blocks are cut. So it has like three facades. 
this is the, the floor plan with the different apartments. And he, he built corridors along the apartments connecting with the patio also to get light inside. The decoration was, as I told you, designed by him. But what happened uh, with the family, with the main family, Mila family, is Mrs. Um, Mila. She didn't like it all, you know, uh, neither the building or the decoration, because the people made fun of the building. It was so new, so so different that people, you know, made fun, and she 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 hated. So after Gaudí's death, she changed all the decoration of the building. Okay, another of the most visited buildings in Barcelona of Gaudí. And finally, uh, we arrive to the main work of Gaudí, the work of his life. Gaudí is, his nickname is the architect of God because this church, the Sagrada Familia Basilica. It is not a cathedral. And you know, you know, we only could have a cathedral in town, the one uh, with the chair of the bishop. That's the one uh, that we have in the, in the, in the old quarter. Okay. So this is a basilica, an important church that was consecrated by the Pope uh, Benedict XVI in 2010. So it started in 1882, uh, um, and they wanted they wanted to finish in 19 sorry in 2026 when it's going to happen the centenary of Gaudí's death. We'll see because this last year they had a lot a big delay. Okay. So let's take a look inside. Okay. Okay, sorry. So this is a, a, a church that was built in the enlargement district, this new area of Barcelona. It was an expiatory church um, that was built uh, by donations, okay? It's the, the prayer of his life. Uh, we could get inside uh, in this uh, very um, innovative basilica. But originally, um, it was, um, commissioned by an uh, association of, uh, of um, religious persons, the body of St. Joseph, um, and they promote the construction of the church. The first architect was in Gaudí, was this uh, Frances Paula Villar, uh, and the first stone was put in 1882. But one year after, this architect refused the project, so Gaudí took over, and because a huge donation at that moment, he was able to redesign the whole project. So from a kind of neo-Gothic style church, he designed a totally new and comparable and innovative project. He knew uh, it was a project to, to, to last during generations. So that's why he decided to build vertically instead of you know, going horizontally. Now that is the most visited monument in Spain. Uh, with 4.5 million, uh, million visitors last in 19, uh, 2019. Okay. Um, inside, uh, people are coming to see the beautiful architecture also because of the devotion. He was inspired by the Bible, by the liturgy and the nature as in many other aspects of his works. And he wanted to be the church as a symbol of faith. Yeah, because Gaudí was a very religious man. So here we have the facade that was started by Gaudí. It was finished in the 1930. Gaudí died in 20, uh, 1926. So we had a holy family in the main entrance, in the main portal, Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. We have three portals, um, hope, faith, and in the middle, charity. What is, you know, it has, you know, this, Cyprus tree uh, at the top, that means, you know, hospitality and also the, the, the love of God for us. And in the other side, we have the facade of the Passion. It's facing, you know, the, the west, the sunset. Uh, it shows, you know, in a very dramatic way, the steps of the Passion of Jesus Christ till the moment he died on the cross. It was, um, finished by obviously another sculpture, not by Gaudí, Josep Maria Subirats. And this is gonna be the main entrance. It's unfinished, it's the last facade they want to build. They have this beautiful bronze uh, main access door with the inscription of the Our Father 
um, brain. The towers has to be high because it's the connection between mankind and you know God. So Gaudi wanted them very high. They are going to be at the end 18 towers, uh, 12 for the apostles, four for the evangelists, the one of Jesus and the one of the Virgin Mary. He wanted to be visible, the church, from the whole city. Height is also very important inside the cathedral, inside the, the, the basilica. Uh, these columns that look like a forest, it means it symbolizes the, the church, the pillars of the church, you know, hang and um, supporting the, the basilica. And also uh, uh, the important Trinity, the Holy Trinity, Jesus, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the Baldachin, and in the skylight up there, we have uh, this mosaic representing God itself. And we have Joseph in one side of the, of the crossing and the Virgin Mary in the other side. So they complete um, Holy Family. Light is also very, very important. It gets for all, from, from all the sides, from all the windows, and you know, it's diffused by the beautiful colors of the stained glass windows and also the, the skylights. Uh, up there in between the, the towers, the columns. Uh, so it's really beautiful inside when you are any moment of the day, different colors depending, you know, uh, from where the, the light is, is, is hidden. It's really a, a unique experience. Okay. Um, symbolize also, you know, the connection with God every time you get in this kind of monumental uh, uh, church. Um, the construction of the child was complicated. He was using, you know, all of that kind of techniques that I told you. And he was planning for the future. So in each period, you know, they had used, you know, the most innovative technique, like nowadays from the last decade, you know, this 3D technology, all kind of innovation in architecture of construction are also put in place in, in the construction. So you have the overview of what is left, okay? Uh, well, this video is from some years ago, so they have done a little bit more in the height of the towers. And everything is happening with the church open, with the visitors. This is a model of what is done and what is gonna be uh, in the future. This, these are the, the, the sacristies are partially done already, some of them. That is gonna be the tower of the Virgin Mary, okay, at the back of the church. That is gonna be the main facade, the glory facade with the four towers left, the four towers in the middle of the evangelist, and the one of Jesus is gonna be the tallest tower, the tallest building in town with about 566 feet, but a little bit shorter than Montjuic Hill because Gaudí um, thought that, you know, nothing could be comparable to the work of God. So he wanted the church a little bit shorter than the mountain made by God, the mountain of Monjuk. Okay, so, well, that is pretty much, you know, all uh, what I wanted to share with you about Barcelona and about Gaudí. Thank you so much for, for, for watching, for attending, for sharing uh, with us, you know, this moment of uh, this time. And thank you so much to all of you. If you want to further information, you could reach me through that email or through Mara in Girl Travel Tours. It was my pleasure uh, to be with you uh, this evening. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. That's awesome. Thank you, Manuel. We had so much um, good feedback that you provided with so much great information. In fact, so many people will probably have to go back and watch the recordings just to get a lot of the information. But I think that um, one, I'm putting up a slide so that everybody can see how to tip Manuel if they appreciated this tour today. And if you have any questions about tipping and you're unsure of the information, just email me at marawalsh at gmail.com and I will help sort that out for you. Okay, Manuel, I think that it's time for you to open the Q&A and we can okay. go through the questions here and I will help you as you go through them to organize them. So if you wanna start all the way at the top and address the okay. questions as you see fit, we can get through these. And I, I have to tell you that this is 
often my most favorite part of the presentation <laughs> because I think it uncovers, you know, it's sort of like peeling an onion. It gets into things in a little more depth than you do in the presentation. So I look forward to uh, what you're going to add to the presentation right now. So if you're ready, you can start. Okay, with I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I, I really like, you know, this kind of a questionnaire because, you know, it gives me another opportunity to, to give you more information. So thank you so, so much to all of you for, for your question. Okay, so we have a question here first from Sarah. Um, how much has the Sarah Familia changed in the last 15 years? I was able to see it when, at the time, I'm very excited to see the finished product. But, but, but it, it had changed a lot, you know? I travel every year several times to Barcelona, and from one year to another, especially in the last 10, 15 years pretty much, you know, they have done a lot of work. That's why uh, they wanted to be finished in 2026. Probably uh, because of the pandemic, it's gonna be a little later, but you know, Every year, you could appreciate, you know, what they have done from one year to another. Okay, so yes, it's changed. Uh, Leslie, uh, how many days to cover Barcelona and spend two nights at the beach? Well, this is a tricky question. It depends what you want to do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Barcelona has a lot to see. I, I, I would say that at least a week, okay, five days, a minimum, to cover some of the most important monuments. What is the weather, Susan, uh, what is the weather like in Barcelona now? It's freezing. It's freezing in Spain. We are on below zero, I mean, uh, uh, Celsius, okay? It was snowing in Madrid. It hasn't snowed since 12 years ago. Today was snowing, so now it's freezing. <laughs> in January, probably, is the January, February, very cold. Uh, Gloria, did Gaudí break existing tile to use his in his uh, buildings, or did he manufacture the tiles and then break it? No, he 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 broke, you know, uh, tiles and he used you know all kind of recycling materials. He he was a master recycling. He probably was one of the first person recycling things. Okay, not only with tiles, but all kind of elements. Uh, Mar Marie. Are the lampposts still, yes, the lampposts are still in Plaza Real, beautiful square. Don't miss it when, when you come to visit Barcelona. Susan, can you give us an example of the difference in speaking uh, with the Catalan? Okay, yes, very beautifully. Okay, uh, for instance, in Spanish, to say, hello, how are you? We say, hola, como estas? Okay, but in Catalan is, um, well, hola is the same, but normally it's hola, con by show, con by show. In Spanish, um, goodbye is adios. In Catalan is adeu. In Spanish, uh, thank you is gracias. In Catalan is gracias. So slightly differences and some words are totally different. Uh, Catalan is a mixture in between uh, Spanish, Italian, and French, pretty much, eh? because it's there eh? in the corner in between the three countries, the three areas. Gail Hollins. Did he have a specially trained builders that were able to construct his very special designs? Well, he had a lot of followers and he trained, especially at the Sagrada Familia, he trained a whole team because he knew that, you know, it was a kind of decades work to follow. Yes, he, he had followers and he trained, trained them. Dorothy, did he use any important materials? If yes, where did they come from? Well, that's a very technical question. Probably he did, but mostly he was using the materials around. Probably he imported iron and other kind of materials that wasn't available at the area, but mainly he was working with the materials in the area. It was a very industrial uh, area, Barcelona, with a lot of factories, with tiles, with kind of materials. Catherine, does the day show how long it took to build, to build it? Yes, the day that I, I put is the time from the beginning of the construction to the end of the construction, okay? I think it was a, a mistake in one of them, but yes, we must be our report. Uh, Kit, did Gaudi, Gaudi supervise design the tile installation of the buildings he designed? Well, he, he was over the top, okay? Obviously, probably he, he, he wasn't able to be there all the time, but yes, he designed, but it was a kind of technique that people, they learned, okay? To put it all together. Vivian. Can I take photos on this colorful bench of the park without entering and paying the ticket? Sadly, it's not possible anymore. <laughs> they want your money to keep you know, the, the area. 
to get into the tiles and to get into the bench, you need to pay. I mean, from the outside, it's very, very blown away from the entrance. So, uh, Joanna, uh, DKD build hotels in Barcelona of Spain? Mm, no, as far as I know, only buildings and properties and church and other kind of hotels. Marcy, when is the best time of the year to visit? Well, in general, to visit Spain, the best time is spring and autumn, probably May, June, April, May, June, September, October, because in the summer it's kind of hot, but it could be also very nice if you want to go to the beach. Susan, though this uh, tile work is beautiful, it is difficult to maintain. Well, they need to take care, but pretty much it's not that difficult, but you know, are tiles. So if they are well done, you know, they are waterproof, but they, they have to maintain somehow. Uh, Ruth, how on earth were the workers able to produce the buildings he designed? I don't know. <laughs> well, probably they were also master builders, but yes, for, for techniques, uh, I don't know about that. Arlene, did KLD design every feature of his structure or did he have the design team under his direction? You know, pretty much he was over the top in everything. Obviously he had a team uh, at the end, but yes, he designed most, even, even the, the furniture. Okay. Robin, in Casa Pajo on the same street as Casa Milan. Yes, both of them are in this beautiful avenue, boulevard, Colas Paseis de Gracia, kind of trendy uh, Barcelona's uh, Chamelise. Cheryl, what materials were using the curvilinear forms on the Casa? Casa Milan, probably. Primas was a stone. Eh? Uh, I think he, you are referring to that. Norma. It is easy for an English speaking person to live in Barcelona. Yes, pretty much, you know, in Spain, not all people will speak English, but a lot of us will speak English. And Barcelona is a very touristic city, so no problem. But you have the chance to, to, to learn Spanish of Catalan too. Tina, what is your favorite place to go to, go to in Barcelona? Well, that's a very tricky question. <laughs> the, 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 the Gothic Quarter is beautiful. That is a beautiful area beautiful area to get laws around and in, in particular the area of the coffee quarter near to the port okay the born the neighbor district b-o-r-n jen jean did he draw structural plans or just pictorial and then supervise the building the thing is he normally he refused to draw a lot of plans he he preferred to make models plaster models okay in fact you know the one he made for the Sagrada familia were destroyed because of the civil war. Uh, so it was a problem. Later on, they were able to reconstruct them, okay? Um, someone anonymous. Are there Airbnbs in Barcelona that send them here to visit? Yeah, there's a lot. In fact, they, there's a problem with that. They have a problem with that. Best time, I already said, you know, probably spring and autumn. Irene, what kind of a year will be ideal to visit? I already said that. Karen, it is free to visit Park Well, not anymore. You need to pay a ticket to the monumental to the monumental area. It's not very expensive, but you need to pay. Karen, when did Barcelona begin to embrace of this architecture? Three months from the beginning, he became very popular, uh, in particular uh, with some of the first buildings and even with the other ones. Uh, yes, he became a very popular artist. Uh, Sharon, what kind of paint is used for all these colorful buildings? That's a very technical question. I don't know exactly what kind, but normally plastic pain is the one normally they use. If um, does Barcelona have a pass for this kind of activity? Yes, they have a kind of uh, London pass that you said, the Barcelona travel card right, with different days. What was uh, Sydney? What was the day for the day of the book? The 23 of April, every day, every, every year, the day of St. George, St. Jordi in Catalan. Jane is asking, did Gaudi have any knowledge of or connection to the work of Frank Lloyd Wright of the work of Rene McIntyre in Scotland? I'm sure he knew. I, I know, I'm sure he knew them. I don't know if it was a direct connection, but they, they were, you know, in the world of architecture at that time. Liz, could you point out which Gaudi architectural details feature animals or animal parts, like feet on a back half, that type of things? He used that kind of inspiration, like the dragon that we saw, another kind of depends on the, on the, on the, on the sport. Wendy, 
sorry, but when is the rose celebration again? 23 of April. Sharon, how much are the Gaudi apartments? Uh, well, they are on shade. <laughs> World Heritage Shade. You, you, you could visit them with different tickets around 20, 25 euros probably now. If, um, how, when, why did Barcelona people start using the dialect with the TH instead of the Barcelona? Okay, well, it's, it's not a dialect. Don't say that to a Catalan, it's a crime. They have his own language from the medieval ages, you know, the Catalan evolved from the Latin, like the Spanish, the Italian, the Portuguese, and the French. Carmen, pourquoi il n'y a plus de son? Uh, why he didn't have a song, uh, a song, right? <laughs> but he, well, we don't know that much about his personal life. He was very religious. He was living with his father and his niece. Later, they, they both died. It said that he had a, um, a kind of, um, he was in love with that girl and she refused him. So not that much information about it. And another anonymous uh, viewer. Do they have modern heat, water, cooling, Wi-Fi, et cetera, in these old and beautiful buildings? Well, they are not really apartment buildings except one in the Casa Mila. But that one, yeah, they have the, all, all that things. Who lives in this building? Well, they are monuments except one apartment in Casa Mila, as I told you. If you wanted to visit all these Gaudí sites in Barcelona and go and choose on them, and, and walk through the body parts of that. How many days would you need? Well, at least a week. I would say five days a week, as I said. Uh, if again, can you go to charge services in Sagrada Familia? Yes, yes, they have services. Not every day, not like a regular church, but they have services and ceremonies, important ones sometimes. Lauren, what were the names of the two restaurants you recommended? Well, at Bougie, but it's close, but the one uh, of Arola, Arola is one of the most important chefs in Barcelona. So Sergi Arola, A-R-O-L-A, -A, for instance, one of them is that's very nice. Derek, how long would you suggest to visit Barcelona to be able to see, I say, I say again, five days at least. Are any of these models still in existence? Yes, if you go to visit the Sala Familia or Casa Milà or Casa Bajo, they have a museum and you could see some of them. Mm -hmm. Some originals, some reproductions. Eve, will the Sagrada Familia Church be able to be finished during Gaudí's lifetime? No, 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 not at all. He knew, you know, uh, they are working in the Sagrada Familia from the last 140 years. They wanted to be finished in 2026. But probably they will have some delay because of the pandemic. Uh, Elizabeth, Given how, in, given how innovative his styles were, did any of them have structural issues? No, as far as I know. Probably all the building, they, they need to be, you know, restored time to time, but no really big issues, uh, as far as I know. And why are there, why are there cranes outside the San Because there is street and construction. They are, you know, it's a, a working in progress building. You mentioned that Gaudí walks six miles per day. Do you know where, where his favorite place to walk? Normally, he was walking from his house in the park well, down the mountains to the city center to Sagrada Familia. Pretty much, he, he was stopping some churches to pray, but not that much. The avenues, the ramblas. And Marie, are his buildings difficult and expensive to maintain? Well. As any monument, they, they need a, a lot of maintenance because they have a lot of visitors. Okay. Hazel, I have seen some of his this architectural in Sintra in Portugal and other or places, odd places in Europe. Will they just be copies or copied? Well, they are not exactly the same style. They will, will be connected because of the modernism, but the one of them are very particular. Right? But you know, at that time we had uh, all kinds of these buildings all over Europe. Karen, any idea what Casa Bajo cost to build? Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's a very, <laughs> maybe I could look up for that, but I don't know. A lot of money, uh, Mary, what will the 18 towers represent? Yeah, the, the 18 towers, 12 for the 12 apostles, four for the, for, the, for the evangelists, one for Jesus, and one for Mary, for the Virgin Mary. 
Brian, with much more modern construction technology over the past 40, 50 years, why will Sagrada Familia take almost 150 years to complete? Well, because, you know, it, it was a process that was stopped in different periods during the Civil War, during the 40s and 50s. So they really are, they are really working for these last 40 years and it's a lot to work and they are working just with donations, you know, it is not supported by the government of Catalonia of Spain, so only by donations. So that's why. But they have enough money. Also with the tickets you are paying when you are visiting. So that's very important. Are they, Heather, are they working off of these plans or did they come up with newer plans? No, no, everything was planned, although they need to develop some things, but you know, everything was planned and designed by Gaudi. Okay. Duco, what kind of lighting did Gaudi use to Sagrada Familia? I see all the different colors too. Well, the light you get inside is because of the stained glass windows, okay? Because they are very colorful, depending if it's, the light is hitting from the east or from the west, you get the different colors during the different uh, times of the day, okay? Penny, I'm sure Manuel will answer this, but how is the continuing construction funded? Incredibly expensive, yes, with donations. With donations that everyone could, could afford, but also with the, with the money you pay for the tickets. Huh? Sometimes an institution of a company, they, they could give you, you know, millions of dollars if they want it, but you know, our donations to this um, association. Um, and in the church, why are some of, of the outside spires painted orange? Well, because they are not as uh, well, because those are representing, you know, fruits like oranges, lemons, all kinds of fruits yeah, provided by the nature. So it's because of that. Lina, can you talk about the music hall? Oh, that is the Palau of La Musica. It's a beautiful building, not built by Wolby, but in the same period in this kind of very beautiful modernist style. It's a beautiful place. They, they have concerts and, 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 and music events, but it's really beautiful inside. Jasmine, what is your favorite thing to do on your spare time? Well, in general, well, I like to read, I like to hear music, to walk eh, when it's possible and we are not in a lockdown. There are many things, okay? But music, reading, I love that. If or two or three don't miss found items from Barcelona, Items you mean gifts? I don't know, maybe a nice glass of sangria <laughs> or uh, some of these uh, little, you know, trencadies, broken tiles, and gifts are very beautiful to buy. Uh, Linda, do you know if the architect Santiago Calatrava was influenced by Gaudí? Calatrava designed the Milwaukee Art Museum. Well, Calatrava is one of the most important nowadays Spanish architects. Yes, probably he was influenced by Gaudí. Uh, in particular in some of these kind of natural organic forms that he normally want to, 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 to create on, on, the, on, on his buildings. But Caracter is a very controversial architect because, you know, some of his buildings are, you know, falling apart after, after the construction. He's from Valencia, not from Barcelona. Trish, uh, I saw palm trees. Is Barcelona in a tropical area? Well, no, we are not in a tropical area, but enough enough warm to have palm trees. The palm trees were taken, they, they were brought to Barcelona, to Spain, by the Moorish eh? uh, in the Middle Ages. Judy, did Barcelona ever separate from the rest of Spain? No, part of them, they wanted to be separate eh? because they have, they have this, Catalan, uh, this political issue with the nationalism. They had a need of referendum some years ago, so it's a kind of issue. It's similar to, to, to what happened in Scotland with the UK something like that, okay? Selim, it is true that Gaudí was run over the trolley when he stepped back into the street to admire his work. No, not really. He was just walking and crossing the avenue, he was hit. Uh, Dory, are all the interiors of his buildings open for tours? Uh, yes, uh, most of the buildings, they have tours, you know, every day of the year. I mean, to pay the ticket, but you could visit inside. Not all the buildings, but most of the important ones. Rosemary, your favorite favorite stage of Gaudí's work? Well, I would say that the last one, the one of Casa Milá, Casa Bajo, the naturalist, naturalist period. I, I love that. 
and obviously there's a lot of amino. It's amazing inside. Nancy, was there damage during the Second World War? But not really because Spain uh, didn't participate in the Second World War. We had our civil war before, and yes, the Sagrada Familia was a little bit damaged. You know, all the, the model, the plaster models of Abi were destroyed and the construction was stopped by, by many years afterwards. Bill, how and when did Abi die? In 1926, hit by a tram when he was walking to the Sagrada Familia in a regular day. And is there a contemporary school of architecture that is based on Gaudí? Well, there is a very important uh, uh, architecture school in Barcelona. It's not based on Gaudí, but obviously, you know, Gaudí has a lot of influence in the architects in Spain, and in particular in Barcelona. Norman, to see um, the most colorful light in the Salva, what time of the day is best? Well, depends what you like, but the sunset is beautiful. It's very warm light. Huh? But also in the in the beginning of the day. But the sunset, I love that time of the day. Susan, I did not see a lot of bike vehicles, more walking on food. It's maybe Barcelona does not accommodate a person who has difficulty with mobility. Oh no, no, there's a lot of vehicles in, 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 in Barcelona. In fact, it's sometimes a problem. Yeah, as many important cities, they have facilities for disabled people, but sometimes could be a little more complicated. But you know. They have services for that. Norman, I've heard pickpocketing is common in the Ramblas. Is this true? Well, sadly, as in many other major cities, when we have a lot of tourism, pickpockets are working. You need to be careful, yes, in the Ramblas because it's very crowded. So when it's crowded, they, they find a way to pickpocket in. Flavio, but it's not a horrible incident. Just be careful. Flavio. Why does the city have a museum of Picasso? He's from Malaga, right? Did he live in Barcelona too? Yeah, Picasso was born in Malaga, but uh, he was living in Barcelona when he was young before moving to Paris. And there's a beautiful Picasso museum in the Gothic Quarter. He, they joined several uh, medieval palaces and it's a beautiful museum with beautiful um, paintings from his earliest period eh, of Picasso. Bill. I live in Barcelona for two months and recall being told that much of this work was considered a gift to the city of Barcelona. How to is this assumption? Uh, well, a gift like a big gift to the city? Not really, a gift because of the repercussion, eh? because of the visitors uh, they, they could get. You know, most of the properties they were in private hands and only the um, part well was uh, made public. Okay, and the Sagrada, Sagrada Familia belongs to this association and to, and to Bishop of Barcelona, okay? Not to the church in Barcelona. So, but the repercussion obviously is like as a gift for the city, okay? for the visitors they, could, they, they are getting because of that. Rwanda, did Gaudí design any buildings outside of Spain? No, no, no. Outside Barcelona, the one that I saw, I saw in the presentation. Wendell, I have heard of tapas too. What is that? Well, tap tapas is this kind of Spanish typical little food that you could uh, uh, buy to food. And yes, you could go with a guy to visit different tapas restaurants and places. And they, I, I did some of those and it's very fun, <laughs> in fact. We will teach you about, you know, how to eat the tapas, the jamón, the sangria, everything is really fun. Jan, will it be possible to make a tree full of the dragons of Barcelona? You mean the dragons in the park well, or the dragons in the different buildings? Yes, maybe it's a very specific tour, but if you ask me to do it, I'll design for you. Bill, how did other architects and artists view his work while he was alive? Well, at the beginning, uh, he was a little bit on, on the stream, so he was like a, co a competitor, okay? But, uh, but when he developed his own personal style, well, Sante was controversial, yeah? but he became very popular anyhow, okay? Most of the, of the fancy families, uh, they, they wanted him, you know, working for them as, as the wealth family. Julia. When is the best time of the year to visit oh, I said that spring, autumn? Um, Amelia, Amelia, what cultural factors influence the architectural, architectural features of the building's design? 
Well, the thing is, you know, that period in Barcelona was a, a, a time of, you know, economical explosion. Okay, this time in between the the begin the beginning of the 1800s and the and the beginning of the 1900s, um, a lot of wealthy families, industrialists, they they wanted to put Barcelona on the map. Also associated with the nationalism, so all of that you know had an influence on on this development of the buildings. Um, is there a best time of the day to visit Sagrada Familia? Uh, I already said that for me, sunset is beautiful with the light coming into the church. What is the entrance fees for the creation? Depends on the place, but it's around 20 euros, 20, 25, depends uh, what you want to do inside. They have different tickets, okay? In the Sagrada Familia, for instance, you could visit just the, the, the church or the church with the tower, so depends on what you want to do. Did people kneel? Did people continue about this style after he died? Or has anyone tried to mimic his style since? Well, he had a very personal style. In fact, you know, well, they were following a little bit, you know, the trends of the modernism, but he developed this such a personal style. So he, they, his followers somehow in some buildings. Susan, are the beautiful buildings you show are still occupied by owners or people renting. Well, some of them are still private properties and some of them are monuments you could visit. Some of them um, belongs to institutions like foundations or museums. Rosario, I read that he was quite religious, true? Yes, he was very, very religious. In fact, that was the reason because he dedicated the last 40 years of his life to the construction of the Sagrada Familia. He was considered his, his name as the architect of God. He was very religious. Mara, will the Basilica ever be a working church? Well, in fact, it's a working church, but they have regular uh, services. They have special services but on Sundays, they have services because it's open to visitors and it's still on construction. But yes, it's going to be a church with regular churches in Sao Paulo. Why is the name well used instead of Gaudí? No, well is the name of an um, industrialist. He was a friend uh, and also a, a, a patron of Gaudí. Okay, one of the most important richest families in Barcelona. So well is a family. They commissioned to Gaudí many, many buildings, and Gaudí is the architect. So there are two different persons. What is uh, Heather? What is your background to gain all this knowledge of Barcelona? <laughs> well, my background is complicated <laughs> because I study for economics, but you know, I, I, I have my, my, my studies on, 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 on tourism. I like architecture, I like art, so I pretty much, you know, study on my own. I took some courses on the university and the schools, uh, but um, I'm not an architect or, or nothing like that. Susan, um, is there any significant significance as to why Gaudi wanted 18 towers? Because he wanted to represent those disciples, evangelists, Mary and Jesus. Do you think Catal Catalonia will become independent of Spain? Well, who knows? The democracy will talk. Nowadays, they are half to half. In, in the future, they have a kind of referendum in the 60% or the 70% of the people they want to be an independent country. Well, it's democracy, you know? I'll be sad. I love Barcelona, I love Catalonia, but what you can do about that? Uh, Paula. Did he or others have to create different buildings tools to achieve some of the arcs and other design elements? Yeah, in fact, they needed to develop, you know, um, tools uh, and techniques to do that. You know? uh, Patricia, is Barcelona a workable city? Yes, it is. They have a lot of spaces, there are pedestrians and very easy to walk. Alicia, Alicia. Did Gaudi live in one of his buildings? Not really. At the end of his life, the last part of his life, he was living in a, in a house built in the Park Well, but was built by another actor, not by him. Julia, uh, what area will be rest, will, will be the best for walking tours and restaurants? Well, the Gothic Quarter is beautiful to walk around, around the beach, that area, because it's mostly pedestrian. Okay. 
And Maripati is very crowded in some uh, months of the year, mainly June, July, August. Uh, Mary, what's the architect of Palau? The long music. Uh, sorry, was the architect of Palau of the music? I see that we no, 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 no. I um, don't remember exactly the name. He was one of the important architects at that time, but not not the city of Wabi. Uh, Darlene, how did the family living in the apartment in Casamila get to rent there? How much does it cost for them to rent? What well, the, the the I don't know how is it cost. You know the the, the apartments in the Casamila were were rent or sold. Okay, but at the end only one person remains. I don't know exactly how much they pay or they 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 they. If they got it or something. Catherine, what was the region of his great style in your opinion? His architecture is almost surreal. What sparked his imagination and skill? Well, one of the reasons that the scholar uh, said is because, you know, during his childhood, he was ill and he, he was resting a lot of time. He wasn't able to go and play with the other kids. So he was admiring the nature, impressed by the nature, thinking and thinking about that. And it was, he was a genius, okay? So all of that and also his faith and religion uh, was a mixture and, and um, he, he wanted to, to put what he observed in the nature into the buildings. So that's why he developed all these skills with the geometrical uh, figures, okay? So the observation probably uh, was one of uh, the main reasons of the nature. Um, James, what is the plaza behind you? <laughs> well, that, this is a kind of vintage image of the main square in Madrid, Huerta del Sol. I live in Madrid, not in Barcelona. Another uh, anonymous uh, viewer, are the naturalist forms he had created for, et for etches and balconies, etc., poor carve or a combination of the two? It depends on the building. It could be bo uh, both. Uh, Brian, the restaurant Los Caracoles in Gothic, Gothic Quarter is our favorite in town. Is it still there? I think so. I, I've been there a couple of times time ago, so I, I'm not for sure, but uh, I think it will be there. I, 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 I didn't hear about the fire, so I'm, I'm not sure. But you could Google it, probably you could realize uh, this thing is there. Deborah, where did the workers get the material they built Sagra with? Well, in different parts, you know, uh, of Spain, Catalonia, and Sarah. What is your favorite food to eat in Barcelona? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, they have something that they eat in the beginning, but for breakfast. But it's called bread with tomato and olive oil. It's called pan and tomaca. So you need to toast bread, you need to put some garlic, olive oil, and split tomato. And you eat that with an orange juice and with a coffee. Delicious, delicious. I love that. Very easy and simple, but really delicious. Uh, and you could do it at home, very easy. El Elena, what is that hill where there are some important museums like the Miro? That is Monjuic Hill. It's in the south of the city by the sea, by the port. Museums, the park, the national uh, uh, palace, beautiful. Jasmine, what is the best restaurant to eat from? And is there any Dasar Paella? Oh, that's a very tricky question. There are many beautiful restaurants in Barcelona. Yeah, you could get beautiful paellas in Barcelona. Very nice paella. Also, some of them are for tourists. So you want to, you want to visit Barcelona, just let me know. I'll, I'll send you some directions. Maureen, how is the COVID there as my 2023 was postponed? Well, is as in all part of the world, heating, okay? We are not in the worst position right now in Europe, but we are heating up because of Christmas, uh, you know, celebrations. So probably the next month, January is going to be complicated. Yeah? In all Europe, we are having complicated times, sadly. Jeanette, when is the expected day for total confection of the Sagrada? Well, they wanted to finish 2026. Probably it's going to be a couple of years later because of the pandemic, pandemic delay. Bets. Um, are there any newer, more recent buildings and structures that have been inspired by this work in Spain? And thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Um, 
Well, not a stack more inspired. Some of the habits were inspired by Bavaria. Um, I don't recall now what particular building. Okay. Um, Marie, are masses celebrated here now? Uh, you mean the Sagrada? Yes, not in a regular basis, but they, they, they have celebration of masses in the, in the Sagrada. No, no, they, you don't need to take a ticket to get to the mass, to the service. Um, Saturn, one more question. I'm guessing there are, there are technical staff that maintain this structure. I wonder how many people are involved. Oh, I don't know, hundreds of people. Oh, no, depends on the building. Yeah, they have, you know, teams for that, in particular for the Sagrada, which is a huge building. Catherine, what is the best way to tour Gaudi in Barcelona? Well, they have a specific tour for Gaudi. So you could take a tour for some monuments or one monument each day. They have different products for that. How, Debra, how do they clean the buildings inside and out? Well, regular procedures, it depends on the building and the, and the moment. Liz, did Gaudi have a wife and children? No. No, he apparently he fell in love with that girl, but the girl at the end, you know, got married with another uh, gentleman. He never got married or had children. Mary, I had heard too much tourism was causing cost of living and other issues uh, for, for, for the residents in Barcelona. Yeah, that is kind of from, you know, Barcelona because of the Olympics in 1992 became like a place to be. So they are kind of dying of success, like Venice, 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 for instance. So the authorities are just trying to find a balance in between the tourism, because it's a lot of money, and the quality of life of the residents. So they are working on that now. Derek, is there any sort of festival celebrating how this works? No particularly, no. And Rachel, is the Catalan separatist movement still strong there now? Yeah, pretty much. They are 50-50 <laughs> nowadays. They are having elections for the Catalan parliament in February, so we'll see what happens there. Lina, can you discuss the structural aspect of the columns? I don't see any flying buttresses. What will hold up the final cup? Well, this is a very technical question that probably I can't, but you know, the idea of Gaudi, especially with the kind of neo-Gothic style, was to, to avoid to use the buttresses, you know, using another kind of, you know, structural um, um, resources inside the buildings. Yeah? But it's kind of very technical for me. Uh, Vivian, is there good transportation throughout the city? Yes, yes, very huge and easy to get uh, subway system, buses, trolleys, no, very well, uh, system they have. Annette, do they still have vendors in the Ramblas? Yes, they have some vendors still with the browsers and all kinds of things. Stephanie, did any of these works get damaged or destroyed during the Civil War? In fact, the Sagrada Familia was partially, not totally, but partially destroyed in the area where, where they had the plants and the plaster models. Um, anonymous uh, viewer, how much was Gaudi paid for all his projects? <laughs> That's not, I don't know exactly, you know, he was paid, you know, for each of the projects, but I don't know exactly how much for each one of them. You could Google it probably. Um, Amelia, I sort of miss the black side of the history of Montjuic, the horrible prison during the Faxis oppression. Well, because you know, we were we, we weren't focused on Montjuic or in that, but yes, there was a, a side story during the civil war. There was a prison on the castle, people they were executed and so on, yeah, as in any war. Susan, what was Gaudi's heritage? Ethnicity? Was he influenced by the art of the Moors? Well, he was influenced by the uh, Arab Moors because the Moors staying in, in Spain during the, during centuries. So he was influenced by that art and buildings that we have, especially in the south of Spain, the Alhambra in Granada, the palaces in Sevilla or Cordoba. Maria, how far in advance do you need to buy tickets to go to the Sagrada Familia or any of the other buildings? Well, in particular with the Sagrada, you need to uh, be careful because sometimes you need to check it out at least, you know, a month or two months in, in advance, in, in, especially when it's the peak season. Uh, if you are, sometimes you could get there, get into Barcelona and you have tickets available, but this sometimes during the peak, is they are so out. 
So if you are thinking to come to Barcelona, just check it out and, and, and buy quite in advance. <clears throat> Catherine, what is the average monthly rent for an apartment in Barcelona? What well, depends on the area, but it's quite kind of expensive as in Madrid. Probably if you want to be in the city center for a small apartment, you are paying close to 1,000, okay? 800, 1,000 euros per month okay? for a small one. Um, uh, anonymous viewer, does Spain think that Lucas Lucas copy design for a Star Wars <laughs> for the for the you know for the chimneys of so well that's kind of tricky question we don't know probably he he visited Barcelona and he was in, impressed uh, because of that but you know they look like right like the Star the top troopers of Star Wars the chimneys of Casa Vila. Um, I'm looking at the plaza and sol behind you and thinking of celebration like New Year's what is the comp Comparable Plaza in Barcelona. That is probably the Plaza Catalunya, the one that links the old section of the city with the enlargement of the city. So that is Plaza de Catalunya, uh, probably. Um, according to your presentation, it seems that there is no Gaudí building in Sevilla, right? No, not, not in the south. The only one he the only ones he built outside Barcelona are those I saw uh, on the presentation in the north of Spain. Death. Where was the chocolate factory in relation to Patio? No, no, no. It was the house uh, beside. Okay, it's called Admajer. It's a company of chocolate still on, on business. And uh, you could buy this Admajer uh, chocolates all over Spain, even. Okay. Uh, but no, it's the one uh, beside. It's another family, another house. So, is there a museum or exhibit with the blueprints or design plans of the Sagrada Familia? Well, in the Sagrada Familia, they have a museum and they have some of the original um, plans and plus and models of Gaudi and other uh, reproductions. Gail, is his personal house a museum now? Yes, his personal house in the park world is a museum, a Gaudi's museum. So they show you how, how he lived there. Okay. Rona. In the tour, I noticed some six-pointed stars, also known as stars of David or U stars. Any, any significance of his, of this, or just one of his use of shapes? Well, those stars sometimes, you know, had to had to do with the Gothic influence, because during the medieval ages, you know, we have a very important Jewish community in Spain, in many cities, including Barcelona, and so probably is linking to that. Sara, can one still go on roofs on the buildings? Yes, yes, you could go on the roof of the Casa Bajo, on the roof of Casa Milá, you could climb or go inside the towers of the Sagrada. Uh, Chris, the song Barcelona by Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Caballer is my favorite song. I love that song too. Are there any sites in Barcelona dedicated to Montserrat Caballer as she was from the city? No, as far as I know, uh, probably in the in the in the Opera Palace uh, in the center they have something they gave to her, but there is not a museum. I love that song, Barcelona. <laughs> very very beautiful song. Um, the Olympics were a, a very important moment for the city. Sheila, is there a synagogue or a Jewish population in Barcelona? There is a synagogue, a modern one, uh, and a few Jewish communities, not really big. Uh, but yes, um, another anonymous viewer, are you in Barcelona right now? No, I live in Madrid. I love Barcelona and I travel so often, but I live in Madrid. Why was the Basilica built so far from the center of town? Because that area was the enlargement of the city at that time. And so the promoters of the, of the church, they wanted an impressive charge for that uh, new area of the city at that moment. Now it's pretty much the city center. Paula, and um, what is known, what is known about where Gaudí himself lived? Well, he was living the last part of his life in the Parwell, uh, in a, a house over there. Julian, what is Gaudí buried? He's buried in a crypt into the Sagrada Familia. So you could visit the, the crypt. Paul, who is funding the work of the Basilica? Uh, donations. Eh? Popular donation, the tickets that you pay when you get inside, you buy gifts at the, at the, at the, at the shop, 
and any donation that anyone or person, institution wanna, wanna make. Joyce, did Gaudí work on La Plaza Mayor in Salamanca? Mm, no, as far as I know, no, in the Plaza Real in Barcelona. Lim, does this church have an organ? Yes, they have beautiful organ and the music inside is really amazing. So if you have the chance to visit with a service, you could enjoy that too. Rowena, uh, what area is the best to stay to be able to walk to as many of these sites as possible? I would say just city center along the, the Passeig de Gracia, the Gothic Quarter, just in the main city center. Uh, everything is kind of walkable from there. Catherine, what architectural style would you call Gaudis? Well, Gaudis <laughs> is so particular, but you know, he, he, he said it was uh, the, you know, the perfect example of the modernism, but the, his style goes beyond that, far beyond at the end. Huh? So from modernism to Gaudi. Karen, please talk about Montserrat. It is it still open? Montserrat, you mean the, the, the church over the hills uh, close to Barcelona? Yes, it's a, an area which is open. Huh? It's still outside Barcelona. You need to travel like an hour from Barcelona to the mountains, to Montserrat. A very important place for the Catalan culture. Uh, Nancy, are there noticeable Bax influence in Barcelona? Well, not really. I mean, we have some Bax uh, restaurants, some places, but no, 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 really. They are connected, how, how? Because in the Bax country also they have this feeling of the, for independence, but they're different cultures. Uh, Anita, are you available to, for private Barcelona Day tours? Where you want me? Uh, but we need to organize that because I need to travel to Barcelona first. <laughs> I love to travel to Barcelona now. Elizabeth, you said five periods. Yeah, it's the early period, Orientalist, Neo-Gothic, Naturalist, and the one that is called a kind of um, organic synthesis is the final period represented mainly by the Sagrada Familia and some of the features in the last buildings, like the Parkwell, Casa Rajo, and, um, and Casa Mina. So it's an organic synthesis or final period, as some of the people call it. Um, uh, if, are there any special celebration over Easter? Yeah, well, they have, we have the Holy Week in, in all of Spain, so that's the main celebration at the Easter. Um, Vicky. Uh, okay, this is in Spanish. He's, she's asking there's going to be a copy. I think it's going to be uh, hanged and on the website, available uh, on the website. Um, Greta, when, uh, when the owner of Casa Mila do permanent damage, when, oh, so when, when they change the decoration inside, they did it, you know, just after the, the death of Gaudi, because probably they thought we can be still alive was a kind of offense. So when he died, the owner, the lady owner, uh, she changed everything, the decoration inside. Tricia, was he paid to build the church? No, 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 no. Uh, it's paid by donations, as I told you. Um, Loretta, uh, can you remind me the difference between a cathedral and a basilica? Okay, the cathedral is a church, an important church, church in each um, um, uh, ecclesiastical uh, province where the bishop stays. So cathedra comes from cathedra, which means chair, is the chair of the bishop. So in each city, they only could have one cathedral, the one church for the bishop. So that's why this church is not a cathedral, it's a basilica. So it means, you know, it's an important church because any consideration, this one was consecrated by the Pope in 2010. April, how have the buildings survived the earthquakes over the years? Well, the thing in Spain, we don't have that many earthquakes. We have sometimes, in particular in the, in the south of Spain by the Mediterranean, but no really big ones. Dori, are there Roman or medieval or Romanist buildings in Barcelona? Yeah, uh, Barcelona was a Roman foundation, so still we have some remainings. And obviously there's a whole medieval quarter with Romanesque, uh, Renaissance, also buildings later on. Barbara, what do you think the long-term effects of the pandemic in Spain will be since tourism is so affected? Well, 
That is a good question, <laughs> especially for me. We don't know yet, eh? because you know, the tourism business in Spain represents the 15% of our economy. Hotels, restaurants, guides, tours, buses, coaches, this is a big part of the economy, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully, if everything is, go, is going well with the vaccines and everything, by June, by December, we could reactivate everything. Ilian, how much of Spain is Catalonia? How much territory is square kilometers will become independent? Um, what industries and governments for the country are there? And those will be lost. Well, the thing is, is probably, I'm not sure of that how many kilometers, but could be something like uh, less than a fifth or maybe a, a, something like that is the, the east corner to the north with France, but it's an important um, economic engine. So yes, it will be a kind of a loss if they get independent. Esther, which part of the city is Montserrat? Montserrat is outside Barcelona. It's a mountain, a kind of sacred mountain for the Catalans with something like 45 minutes, one hour away uh, from Barcelona to the interior. Charles. Are pinchers in Barcelona or Madrid or Amos? Yes, well, pinchers is a, a kind of tapas from the north that now are popular all over Spain. So you could, you could find pinchers bars also in Barcelona and Madrid. Bill, how handicap accessible are both part well and the Sagrada Familia? Both are handicap accessible. Not the whole visit, but most of it. They have services to help you out. Um, um, anonymous viewer, are are there weddings in that church? Mm, I'm not sure of that. They have regular sun ceremonies and events. I'm not sure about wedding. I don't think so yet. Romina, that's um, in Spanish. She's asking about you know a, a future visit to Barcelona. Probably the best time to visit is spring or autumn, as I told you. And um, anonymous, anonymous viewer is. Is there a special event that would be good to schedule a trip around? Well, the festivities of Aunt Jordi in April are very beautiful, eh? with the roses, the books, the celebrations. Those are very beautiful events in Barcelona. Vicky, I went to the University of Madrid over 50 years ago and bumped into Salvador Dalí while visiting the Pueblo Español. Is that still an attraction? Yes, you could visit still the Pueblo Español in Barcelona. Uh, yes, very nice spot. Eh? Erika, is there any influence from Alphonse Musha in Gaudi houses? I'm not sure of that. Uh, I think he was a later actor, if I'm correct. I'm not sure of that. I'm not sure. Michelle, what is the symbol, the symbolic meaning of turtle I saw in Barcelona? You mean the, the lizard? The lizard? Well, the lizard in the in the um, in the in the um, in the part well is linked to the Greek mythology. Okay, um, Liz, what sites that are not well known do you recommend in Barcelona of the beaten path? Well, there's a beautiful park, uh, within the Citadel Park, uh, which is built in the, in the late 1800, which is not far away from the Gothic Quarter. There's a very, very nice spot, but it's not that visited uh, for, the, for, for, for the tourists. Uh, it's, it's called Citadel Park. Pamela. Uh, yes, there, there, uh, apparently they are waiting in, in the Sada family. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, yeah, they have, you know, regular uh, services in the church on Sundays. Yeah, that's true. Sandy, what are your thoughts on over tourism, which may seem these wonders not just challenging you to the crowns, but knowing the crowns could damage this iconic place? I think I mentioned, you know, the authorities are trying to make a balance in between the visitors and the money. Uh, income and also to keep, you know, the crowns, you know, control. Uh, probably uh, to avoid to feel to have the feeling of being in a kind of thematic park. Okay, somehow. And Deborah, how long will it take to do a tour of all the places you have shown us today? Well, you want to visit all of them, <laughs> right? You will need a couple of weeks. <laughs> but for the essential, probably five, seven days will be enough. That's yes, a great so. place for us to end this tour, knowing how long it would take to actually do a physical tour. And I have to say that you probably would 
um, you probably would would say the same thing is that the pictures do not do it justice. It is beautiful. No, 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 no. The presentation was lovely, but to be there in person is something spectacular and magnificent. Um, so thank you very much, Manuel, for this tour. And thank you for coming again and sharing with us um, Barcelona. We really do appreciate it. And um, for everybody out there, thank you for staying with us for a long Q&A. And we will be back next week to take off for another place. But until we see you again, thank you. And thank you, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you, Mara, for giving me again this opportunity. I'll be glad to, to join you any other time and your, your viewers, your people. It was my pleasure. Thank you and goodbye from Spain. Take care.